Oh gosh. Well, it's time to replace the wood again. How's it growing? Can pressure treated wood be safe for veggie garden boxes? I see this question a lot. Short answer, yes it is. But different people perceive safety in different ways. Of course. Regardless, even after they stopped using arsenic, using pressure treated wood is not organic. Correct, it's not. Unless... Is it safe for humans? Is it safe for the microbiology in the soil? Yes, we'll get into all of that. So you can't use it if you want to be organic. I think I found a way that I can. I've been torn over the subject for years because here in our subtropical climate, I'm tired of having to replace and rebuild the boxes every three years. So I came up with a way that I can use a buffer that can benefit the soil and the plants and we'll get into that later. As organic growers, we want to make sure that no toxic chemicals are leaching out into the soil. The lumber industry and the EPA came to an agreement and on January 1st, 2004, the use of arsenic in chromated copper arsenic treatment of wood was banned in the US. They switched to much safer copper compounds called ACQ, CA, and MCA. Why MCA? Why? I, I just couldn't. <laughs> Those still cannot be used for certified organic growers. But if you're like me, a home gardener who's not going for organic certification, but you still do care about the health of the microbes, healthy soil, healthy plants, you know, as organic as possible. Come on, you're either organic or you're not organic. All right, hold on, hold on. According to the Iowa State University Extension Program, copper residues found through research in soils of raised beds from treated lumber were 10 to 100 times lower than considered toxic to humans. Well, that's great, but as regenerative gardeners... Yes, as regenerative gardeners, we do want to make sure that it's safe for the microbial life in the soil, as I mentioned. Copper, the active ingredient of these compounds, is antimicrobial and the quaternary ammonia also acts as a biocide and that of course is what helps preserve the wood. Yes, copper is an essential plant micronutrient. In high amounts, it can be a problem for both microbes and plants. It can inhibit the plant's uptake of other nutrients like iron and zinc. Now let's talk about buffers. The American Wood Protection Association suggests that if you're still concerned about preservatives leaching out into the soil, place a plastic sheet in between the treated wood and the soil. I'm using something else as a buffer. I've cut down the old boards to fit inside the new boxes. Sure, I lost a little real estate within the boxes, but using old rotting wood in the soil is an old technique called hugoculture. Because that rotting wood has already become a host for beneficial fungi and other microbes. The wood also acts like a sponge to store water and release in drier times. And that wood will slowly release nutrients into the soil as it rots. Now back to that treated lumber. Most leaching occurs in the first few months of use, according to the National Pesticide Information Center. So by the time this old wood is fully decomposed, any leaching that may occur will be inconsequential. If it makes you feel any better, just add that plastic as well. Ooh, tell them about the tags and what to look for. Yes, not all treated lumber is the same. There are different variations of treatments depending on the application. Some are treated for above ground use and others for ground contact like the lumber I bought from Lowe's. By the way, I'm not getting paid in any way from Lowe's to say this, but the lumber that I just bought is exactly what the AWPA recommends for garden boxes and that is category 4A or higher. You could just buy untreated cedar and that would be ideal, but most of us cannot afford that. Again, Healthy gardens begin with healthy soil. For more information about soil building and how to build resilience in your garden, check out this other video. All right, take it from here. Live regeneratively and let's grow together.